Hi folks and welcome to this session on bond retirement. Um, we're going to look at bond retirement and if you just quickly peruse the uh, required here, I've also added a piece that's going to make you uh, prepare a journal entry after the bonds, some of the bonds have been retired for the remaining bonds uh, and make an interest payment. So this question is a little bit different. It is similar to one that we did do in class already, but um, um, uh, I just thought I would add this in for something a little bit different uh, in the video. So in any case, let's begin and look at the problem. Now I'm hoping that you would print the problem uh, before you um, uh, before you actually uh, view the video, just so that you're familiar with the data. And if you want to write any notes or anything on it, you can do that if you if you have a printed version. But in any case, um, let's just look at the data here. This is the actual issue date of the 41.7 million dollar bonds. Um, the bonds are paying 7.5 percent interest, so that's the coupon. And we know that interest is paid semi-annually every April 30th and October 31st. Now the bonds were originally dated November 1st, 2000X4, so you can see that the actual issue date is after the bond date. Um, the term of the bonds are 15 years, so um, the bonds were also issued to yield 8%. So if we compare the yield or the market rate to the coupon, we can see that the bonds are actually paying less than the market would pay So uh, for, for bonds of similar risk. So therefore, we know our bonds are going to trade at a discount. Now, the reason why I highlighted the issue date here is because you can see that if the bonds were originally dated November 1st, 2000X4, there's an interest payment April 30th and the bonds are issued June the 1st, you can see that we were not there at the date of the first interest payment. Nobody was there. So all of the investors would have missed that interest payment. So we need to factor that into our calculation of present value when we're calculating the present value at the issue date for the bonds. So now let's begin by actually calculating the present value of the bonds at the issue date because we're asked to make the entry. So if we have a look here, I just copied and pasted this from Excel and it is in your course so you can print this uh, and follow along. Now uh, what I did is I calculated with the calculator the present value uh, of the bonds uh, but you'll notice what I did is uh, in using the calculator, I used the actual face value, which is clear. I also calculated the payment, and down here I've got the payment as $1,563,750 for each six-month period. So how did I get that? Well, again, I took the face value of the bonds, multiplied it by the coupon, and again, the coupon is always an annual rate, and our interest is being paid semi-annually, so I divided it in half, or 6 over 12 if you wish, to get that payment. Now, we know that the yield is 8% a year, but notice here that I only included n equals 29, because as I said before, when we looked at the question, we missed this interest payment. Nobody got that interest payment. We didn't buy in until a month later on June the 1st. So after this interest payment has come and gone, May 1st is the beginning of the period within which these bonds were actually issued. So um, I'm calculating present value here using n equals 29. So don't forget what n means. n means the number of interest payments that the issuer is going to pay out to the investor. So if one was missed because nobody uh, took up the bond issue, then that means that um, uh, you're only going to pay interest for 29 periods. Okay. Again, don't forget it's a semi-annual bond. So when we compute the present value, we're going to get $39,929,000. $448. So what I did here is anticipating what's coming next and some of the other requirements. I just put together a little uh, present value table here and all I did was um, uh, say for the period that extends from the date that the bonds were dated to the first interest payment, which what nobody received, okay? So I've got no interest payment, no interest expense. There would never be any interest expense. You don't start booking any interest expense until the bonds are issued, 
okay and there's no interest paid to investors by the issuer until those bonds are issued so those two uh, placeholders there are blank because the bonds were not issued until June the 1st which actually falls into this little period here so the only thing we do know is that at that date April 30th okay the um, bonds uh, uh, the present value of the bonds were as we calculated using n equals 29 39,929,448 and I can calculate or back out the unamortized discount because that unamortized discount is really 41,700,000 which is the face value of the bonds less the present value of the bonds so that's how I get the unamortized amount Okay, now if I go here to June 1st, June 1st falls in here, right? Now they want me to make, in the requirement, in the question, they want me to provide the journal entry at June the 1st to issue the bonds. So let's go back to what we have here. I'm just going to scroll down just a touch, okay, and uh, kind of combine the uh, work that I'm doing to calculate the cash that we get on June the 1st as the issuer and, uh, and, and use the table to help me calculate that. So whatever the issuer is going to get is going to be equal to the present value of the bond on June the 1st. That's how we calculate the cash proceeds normally. But the other thing you have to remember is that the issuer is also going to get interest when the interest is paid in the next interest payment, which is October 31st, because they're buying in in June, right? So he who holds the bond gets the interest payment for the full period, regardless of when they buy in. So therefore, what that means is that the issuer of the bond is also going to expect from the investor that the investor pays them one month of interest for the month of May. So what we mean is that if the investor is going to get the in interest for this six month period by only being in the game for five months, i.e. June the 1st to October 31st, then that investor has to pay in advance for that one month's interest that they're going to get on October 31st because because they're only there for five months but they're going to get six months of interest remember he who holds the bond gets the full six months of interest but if you've only been there for five and you're going to get it for six then you've got to pay for that month up front when you buy in on June the 1st so therefore we're going to calculate two amounts here we're going to calculate the present value of the bond at the issue date and we're also going to calculate the accrued interest. That's the amount of interest that the issue that the investor has to pay the issuer in advance in order to to get that six month payment by only being in the game for five months. So therefore to calculate the present value of the bonds at the issue date I'm going to use the present value of the bonds that open up the May 1st period which is the period within which my issue date falls. All right, use that. But the present value would be equal to that present value which opens the period plus what? One, one month of the amortized discount, right? Because don't forget, the present value of the bond at any point in time, if you're looking at this table, on a discount bond is going to be equal to the present value of the bond to open the period plus the amortized discount. Well, if I'm trying to calculate the present value of the bond on June the 1st, I'm only looking at the present value of the bond to open this period plus one month of amortized discount. Don't forget this amortized discount relates to six months. I only want to know what it would be for one month because I want to calculate the proceeds that I'm going to get as the issuer on June the 1st which is going to be equal to the present value of the bond plus that one month of interest that the investor is going to give me. Okay, So one-sixth or one month, one month, one, one month of six of the amount of discount that I'd amortize plus the present value to open the period, May 1st to October 31st, is going to give me $39,935,019. So that's the amount that's the amount that equates to the present value of the bond on June the 1st. But that's not the only proceeds the issuer is going to get. The issuer is also going to get any accrued interest 
because you're buying in to get a full six months interest at this point by only being in the game for five. So to get that extra month's interest, you've got to pay for that privilege up front. So if I know that my whole interest payment for a full six months is $1,563,750, that's for six months. For one month, it's 260625 So when you add those two pieces together, that's the cash proceeds that the issuer should get from the investor. So now when I make my journal entry, I'm going to debit my cash for $40,195,644, credit my bond payable for $41,700,000. I'm also going to, as the um, issuer, note the fact that as part of this payment, the investor has given me this accrued interest. So the accrued interest here has to be set up as a liability by the issuer because on the next interest payment, they're going to pay it out. So we set it up as a payable, and then when we make our next interest payment, we're going to draw down on it when we make that cash payment, which is going to be on October 31st. So now I can calculate my discount. I can just squeeze it out because I calculated this when I calculated the um, uh, issue proceeds right on June the 1st. I calculated that over here. I also know the, uh, the face value of the bonds. I calculated the interest that's included in here, so I can plug that if I want. But there's another way you can figure it out too. You can calculate it. You don't have to just plug it. You can use logic here too. So how am I going to know how much the discount on the bonds are? Well, again, you can use your table. If you go back up here, you know the unamortized amount of the discount to open this period was one million seven hundred and seventy thousand five fifty-two. Well. If you have already amortized one month of it, then the unamortized amount is going to be this less one month of this amount amortized, right? So let's go figure out what that is. Well, one month of 33,428 is 5571. I'll just put a comma in there for you. Okay, so that's going to give me 5571. So now my unamortized discount at this, P, at this point that I'll set up here for the bonds is going to be 1,764,981. So that completes my entry. So now, just go back, replay this part of the video if you want, okay, just to make sure you understand an issue what the entry would be, okay. So you might want to take a break here, replay the video, just to make sure you're confident there. And in the meantime, I'm going to go on to do requirement two. Requirement two wanted us to prepare the entry at October 31st. And if you remember going back to the question, that's an actual interest payment date, isn't it? Right? That's an interest payment date. So let's go back here to our solution. And so we're going to make an interest payment here, or we're going to draw down on the payable by 260625 because that's included in this amount, right? So when we pay you out interest for six months, that's going to include the interest that you paid us up front. So when we're paying this interest for six months, part of that payment is the five months you were in the game plus the one month you gave us in advance. So we're going to draw down on that interest payable liability that we set up on June the 1st as the issuer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to calculate the amount of interest expense that happened from June the 1st, not, not May the 1st, which was the start of that six-month period, not this period. I'm calculating interest expense for the period I was in the game. That started June the 1st, right? So if I go down here, calculate my interest expense, you can see I'm calculating the interest expense by using the interest expense for the full six-month period, which is up here in my table right here for this period within which I'm paying interest, right? So I'm going for this guy right here, right? But I only want five months of six. That's a full six months interest. I was only in the game for five months. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prorate it for five months out of six and come up with this guy for interest expense. So again, you can squeeze out the amount of unamortized discount, but it's easy. You know the amount of discount that would have been amortized for the full six month period is 33428 for the period that ends this date. How do we know? Let's go back to our table right here. That's the amount of amortized, amortized discount that you would have had for the full period of six months. Well, I'm saying I just want it for five months, right? And I calculate it for five months of six, and that's 27,857. And we balance, okay? So now, make sure you understand that. You might want to take another little break, all right? In the meantime, I'm going to move on to requirement three, and now look at the retirement. So now, I'm going to retire, of these 41.7 million in bonds, I'm retiring 10%.
So 4170000 are going to come off the books, but not yet. Not until I update my interest. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to update my interest expense. So how am I going to do that? Well, as I've explained to you before, the retirement, you usually, you'll have two entries in the retirement. You'll update the interest-related accounts. And again, we, we've explained that, uh, think about this like you would a fixed asset. If you were to sell a truck from your business, all right, the first thing you learned to do when you took your other accounting courses is you would say, well, I'm going to depreciate the asset for the period of time I had it up to the date of sale. That we're doing the same thing here, but we're not doing it for a truck. We're not doing it for a non-current asset. We're doing it for a non-current liability. So it's the same logic. Because it's a bond, I'm going to update interest expense. So interest expense is to a bond as depreciation expense is to a fixed asset, right? So i got to update my expense accounts. So now I'm going to calculate interest expense for that period within which I'm um, retiring the bond. Well, now if I go back to my table... I'm looking for the period within which December 31st, X5 falls. Well, that's in this period. So now I'm going to look here and I'm going to say, well, interest expense for that period for a full six months was 1598515 But I want to calculate interest expense for two months. That's the month of November and December, another month, right? So I can update my interest expense. So I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to say, well, my interest expense for two months of that period is going to be 53284 It's the interest expense for that full six months within which this period falls, the period ending December 31st, X5. I'm going to calculate it. Don't forget, that is for a full 100% of the bonds. But I'm retiring 10%. I want to update the interest related to the bonds I'm retiring, right? That's 10% of the bonds, but I only want it for two months because I'm only, these bonds are going to be retired. They're not going to be there for the remaining four of the six months. So I want to calculate interest expense on, based on 10% of the entire six months interest, but I only want it for two months, November and December, okay, for 10% of that issue. So that's going to give me this number, right? Now, how am I going to calculate my discount. Well, if I go back up to the table again, and again, you don't have to, I hope the scrolling doesn't bother you. Uh, i got to do it, so to show you, right? Um, just in case people haven't printed it. But if, if you have your print out there, it's easier for you to, to kind of view. But in this case, we know that our discount, okay, was 34765 That's your total amortized discount for 100% of the bonds for a full six months. We only want it for 10% of the bonds for two months, right? Because 10% of the bonds are being retired. So for the last four months of the six-month period, they're not going to be there. So I'm going to scroll back down here, okay? And I'm going to calculate that discount as 1159, the 34765. But I that's for a whole 100% of the bonds. I want it for 10% of the bonds, and I'm going to amortize that discount only for the two months that those bonds are there, right? And that's going to give me 1159. So you can plug the interest payment. Oh, well, that shouldn't be there. You can plug the interest payable if you want, but you can calculate it too. You know that for the full uh, six months, you would have had interest that you would have paid on these bonds of 1563750 Again, if you go upstairs here, that's the amount of the payment. So you would have paid that for the full six months. But don't forget, those bonds aren't going to be there. 10% of them aren't going to be there, right? They're only going to be there for two months. So when you retire these bonds, when we process the actual retirement and remove the bonds from the books, we're going to have to pay the investors for the two months they were in the game, November and December. So we're going to set up an interest payable down here on December 31st, all right, a 52125 and that's going to be your 1563750 But we only want it for the bonds we're retiring for the two months that the investors were in the game. So that's what we've got to pay them on the 10% of the bonds that we're retiring because we owe them interest for that period of time, right? So now, when I remove 10% of the bonds, I'm going to remove the bonds. You'll notice down here I've started to set up a little table. 
the bonds payable were were initially valued, okay, or are valued at face value, 41.7 million, but I'm retiring 4.17 million of them, right? So I'm going to debit bonds payable for this amount, okay? I am also going to reduce my interest payable because I know when I pay out my cash, part of that cash is going to be the interest that I'm paying them, right? And notice what I'm saying here. We don't know initially if there's a gain or a loss. You never do. Here I'm giving it to you, but the idea is this number is calculated after all the others. Just because it's a discount bond, don't think they're all losses. They're not. You can have a gain. All right. So the best thing to do is to figure out the cash paid and the discount. Okay. Now if you go back to the question, it says here that the bond was retired for 99, so 99% of the face value, plus the accrued interest, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to calculate the amount of cash I would have paid out. Well, on those 4.17 million bonds, I'm retiring them at 99, which is 99% of the face value, plus the accrued interest. Well, the accrued interest was the amount that I set up that I'm now drawing down on because I'm paying them out. That's part of this payment, right? So this guy here, if you calculate it, is this guy right here. So now the only thing I have left to, pay, to calculate is the discount on the bonds. So now I think the easier way to do it is to look at it in terms of a T account. You can calculate it however else you might want to, but I'm doing it this way. I know, I'm using T accounts, I know that when I issued $41.7 million in bonds, I also set up a discount of $1,764,981. How do I know? Let's go back to the June 1st entry when you, where you did it. Okay, on June the 1st, you set up this discount. All right, that's what you set up. We calculated it, right? Okay, that was on 41.7 million in bonds. I think we all see that. So all I'm seeing here is that if I'm now removing from my books 10% of that, I would have also amortized at that date that I'm removing it. I should have bond discount amortized on that 10% issue of 10% of this, right? which is 176498 if I take 10% of this, right? So I have to figure out now, on the retirement, how much of this guy here relates to the retirement, all right? So now I know of this 176498 10% of the bonds, part of that amount was amortized here when I updated my interest account. That's why I've got it here. So I'm showing you how I'm allocating 10% of the amortized discount over the term I had the bonds, right? I've already amortized 1159 of that back in October, right? Where'd this guy come from? Well, don't forget, when I did the, uh, the uh, entry, or sorry, this 1159 was for the December 31st update of the interest. This guy here is going to come from the October 31st entry when I paid out my interest, right? Let's go have a look. When you look up here, don't forget when I made my interest payment, I amortized discount on all the bonds, a full 100% of 27857 Well, part of that is the 10% that I'm now retiring, right? So I can say on that 10% issue, I've already amortized 2786 which is 10% of this guy, right? So, if I know on the full amount of the bonds I'm retiring, I should have amortized discount of this amount, which is 10% of this, then I'm going to plug this to shore it up. So that's the amount by which I'm going to record as an amortized discount when I remove the bonds from the books. And so there, I have all the pieces I need now to plug this number. And if you look at it, okay, if you look at it, if you add the debits and you add the credits, you can see you're a little light on the debit side. So you don't debit a gain, you credit gains when you're creating them, right? So you know if you're a little light on the debit side, it's got to be a loss, and you plug for it. So like I said, you plug it at the very end. Once you know your bond payable that you're removing, which you'd always know, easy to calculate, you know the interest payable, you would have already calculated it up here, right? You can calculate the discount on the bonds. We've already shown you how to calculate this. You just plug this guy, okay? So now, the last thing we're going to do, oh, you might want to take a break here just to kind of digest it, maybe replay the video, up to you, okay? So now the last thing we're going to do is now, what would the entry be on April 30th, X6, right? I gave an entry here to retire the bonds, but don't forget, 
there's going to be 90% of the bonds are still there at April 30th, right? We just retired 10% of them here, December 31st. But 90% of them are still there. So now on April 30th, X6, I've got to pay interest out to the bondholders that remain for the 90% of the bonds that are still out there, right? So what am I going to do? Well, what would I do? Normally when I'm paying out interest, I've got to set up my interest expense, amortize the discount on the remaining bonds, and pay out my interest. But don't forget, this interest here was for 100% of the bonds, right? You've only got 90% of the bonds. This interest expense is for 100% of the bonds. On April 30th, you're going to record interest expense for 90% of the bonds, right? And amortized discount, that amortized discount is for 100% of the bonds. But don't forget, you've already recorded amortized discount for 10%, right? So um, when, you, when you remove the bonds, right? So you have to be thinking about how this April 30th entry is going to look. So with this in mind, and hopefully you've got this chart in front of you and printed out, let's go calculate what would go into the entry on April 30th. So this is the format, right? Because you're paying out interest. So this is the format. We're going to debit the expense, credit the discount, credit cash. What's going to go in these accounts? Well, don't forget, this interest expense is for a full six months, right? But don't forget, that's for 100% of the bonds. We only want it for 90% of the bonds. And by the way, some students might think, well, gee, when you retired the bonds and updated the interest here and the discount, you only amortized it for two months of six. So your question might be, why don't I multiply this by four over six? so I have an even period because 90% of the bonds were there for the whole six months. The only reason I'm prorating up here is because I only have those bonds on my books for two months before I retire them. But when I'm here, these bondholders that hold the remaining 90% of the bonds were there for the full six month period. So I don't have to prorate anything beyond the 90% of this guy, right? So this is my interest expense. Similarly with my cash, I'm still going to pay cash of this amount out, but only times 90%, right? Because that's the payment for a full 100% of the bonds. But these guys have been, the 90% of the bonds that are still there have been there for the full six months. So again, I don't have to prorate beyond the 90%. So this is going to be the amount of the cash payment. And the discount on the bonds are going to be credited for the amount of the discount over that six month period, but times 90%. Again, that's the discount for all the bonds over six months. But 90% of those bonds were outstanding and with in investors for the full six months. So again, I don't prorate. So my entry is as you see it here, final. Okay, so this concludes our presentation of bond retirement with a twist. The twist being, what would the journal entry be for the payment of interest after the bonds are retired for the remaining bonds? So I hope you enjoyed the recording. And if you have any questions, let me know in class. Have a good day.